Hello. This is the first of three videos providing an introduction to the federal sentencing guidelines. This first segment provides an overview of the United States Sentencing Commission. In this video, you will discover how and why the Sentencing Commission was created and will learn about the role of the Sentencing Commission and its primary functions. Disparity in sentencing, certainty of punishment, and crime control have long been issues of interest for Congress, the criminal justice community, and the public. It was these issues that moved Congress to create the U.S. Sentencing Commission and consequently the federal sentencing guidelines. Prior to the creation of the Sentencing Commission and the federal sentencing guidelines, the federal sentencing system involved certain practices that concern the Congress. The federal system was an indeterminate sentencing scheme. Parole allowed federal defendants to have their prison sentences reduced by as much as a third of the sentence pronounced by the judge. Good time credit allowed defendants to have their prison sentences reduced by another third. Without sentencing guidelines to advise the court, Congress found there to be wide disparity in sentences for similarly situated defendants. Judges could sentence anywhere within broad statutory penalties zero years to life imprisonment, for example, and the reasons for the sentence imposed by the judge was unknown. In addition, this pre-guideline system also contained limited due process rights. For more than a decade, Congress researched and debated the issues surrounding federal sentencing. Ultimately, Congress decided that, one, the previously unfettered sentencing discretion accorded federal trial judges needed to be structured. Two, the administration of punishment needed to be more certain. And three, specific offenders, for example, white collar and violent repeat offenders, needed to be targeted for more serious penalties. Consequently, Congress, in a bipartisan effort, crafted and passed the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 1984. The Sentencing Reform Act provisions of this act made some significant changes to federal sentencing practices. Specifically, the act abolished parole in the federal system and provided a determinate sentencing scheme. The act also implemented supervised release, a term of supervision of an offender after release from federal prison to assist the offender's reintegration into society. The amount of good time for federal inmates was reduced to no more than 54 days per year for sentences of over one year. Due process provisions in the federal system were expanded and increased as well. And the act created the Sentencing Commission and provided specific guidance regarding the functions of the agency and the creation of the sentencing guidelines. The U.S. Sentencing Commission is charged with formulating national sentencing guidelines to define the parameters for federal trial judges to follow in their sentencing decisions. Congress established the U.S. Sentencing Commission as an ongoing, independent agency within the judicial branch of the federal government. The seven voting members on the commission are appointed by the President and confirmed by the Senate and serve six-year terms. At least three of the commissioners must be federal judges, and no more than four may belong to the same political party. The Attorney General is an ex officio member of the commission as is the chair of the U.S. Parole Commission. The principal purposes of the commission are, one, to establish sentencing policies and practices for the federal courts, including guidelines to be consulted regarding the appropriate form and severity of punishment for offenders convicted of federal crimes. Two, to advise and assist Congress and the executive branch in the development of effective and efficient crime policy. Three, to collect, analyze, research, and distribute a broad array of information on federal crime and sentencing issues, and four, serve as an informational and educational resource for Congress, the executive branch, the courts, criminal justice practitioners, the academic community, and the public. The Commission is charged with the ongoing responsibilities of evaluating the effects of the sentencing guidelines on the criminal justice system, recommending to Congress appropriate modifications of substantive criminal law and sentencing procedures, and establishing a research and development program on sentencing issues. The Commission staff of approximately 100 employees 
is divided into five offices with the director of each office reporting to the staff director, who in turn reports to the chair. The five offices are general counsel, education and sentencing practice, research and data, legislative and public affairs, and administration. For a look at the specific parameters of the duties of the Sentencing Commission and the directives regarding the creation of the sentencing guidelines and the commission, please look to Title 28, Sections 991 through 998 of the United States Code. For additional information on the application of the federal sentencing guidelines, please watch Parts 2 and 3 of the Introduction to the Federal Sentencing Guidelines videos.